Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today we're doing some French country thrift flips using IOD and fusion milk paint. If you like thrift flips and DIYs, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Our first project today are these wooden bookends. I thought that they had great bones, but I did not like those love hearts. So I'm removing those. I'll save those for later and I will remove all of those nails. I also thrifted this curtain bracket and finial and I'm going to add them to the bookends. My inspiration for this was some sort of architectural salvage. I thought that if I popped those together and painted them all one color that this would look like a really cool unique set of bookends. I'm removing the screw from the bottom of the finial and now I'm going to use some candle wax around the edges and anywhere that I want to be able to distress. This is raw wood and we're going to be using milk paint and milk paint likes to soak into raw wood so I need to create create some resist. Candle wax is perfect for this. Now I need to remove the attachments on my curtain bracket for hanging. So I'm removing those with my drill. I've already applied some Gorilla Super Glue and now I'm adding some hot glue so that we can get it sticking straight away. And I'm positioning it in the center. I am going to add a little bit more glue to the parts that meet up with the vertical part of the bookend. And I'm just applying some pressure, making sure that there's really good contact. I'm then taking the finial, adding some of that Gorilla Super Super glue and some hot glue as well and we'll be able to stick that one down as well. I'll then tidy up any excess glue with a wet wipe. Next I'm using Fusion's Milk Paint Toasted Coconut. This is one of my favorite colors. It's a lovely cream tone. You can see I already had a little bit of that toasted coconut left in the bottom of my cup so I thought better not waste it. So now I'm doing a cap full equal parts powder to water and stirring it up really well. I'm adding a little bit more candle wax to our little curtain attachments that we glued down just to make sure I'm going to get resist. And then I'm going to start to paint. Now I'm going to be applying a very thick single coat. Because we have the candle wax down, we need to make sure that we are not disturbing that wax too much. And I also want the milk paint to be thick because we are going to be speeding up the heating and drying process so that we get that fun crackle look. If you haven't tried milk paint before, I know a lot of people can be intimidated by the fact that you have to mix it up, but please don't. It is a really fun product to use. You can get that beautiful, authentically aged look with minimal effort. Honestly, after you've painted a couple of things, it just becomes second nature. I definitely encourage you to try it out. I've already done a few videos as an introduction to this. I will make sure that I put a link up in the top right hand corner for some videos to inspire you. Now comes my favorite part. We are speeding up the drying process. I'm using a heat gun here, but you can definitely use a hairdryer. I'm moving the heat gun around. I want to get that initial section dry and then I add even more heat and that is what causes the crackle. So I'm just going to be concentrating in certain areas and here you can already see that beautiful crackle appearing. I just adore this look. I'll be repeating the same process for each of the bookends and of course painting the bottoms of each of them. I'm now using a 220 grit sandpaper to distress the edges and anywhere that I added that candle wax, it's really going to help. But also as we are distressing back where the paint has crackled, you are going to get that wonderful chippy look. You really cannot replicate this. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is such a beautiful way to add character to something that's brand new. Now these look like they have been around for years sitting on some bookshelf in an old house. I just love it. If you like my channel, I am going to assume that you also like a bit of a rustic look, but if this was not to your taste, remember 
milk paint does not have to get this crackled. You can definitely achieve a smoother, more sophisticated look if you allow your projects to dry thoroughly. If you do not speed up the drying process or add any of that resist, you will get a perfect finish. Now I need to seal in all that wonderful chippy goodness. So I'm using some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Clear. Wax is definitely the preferred method of sealing milk paint. It definitely gives you a buttery smooth finish and it's going to make sure that there is very minimal extra chipping off of paint that occurs. So after I've got this all on and I've got it wiped down, it really should be able to maintain this beautiful look. I'm going to age these just a little bit more. I'm going to add a few hints of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in brown around the edges and a few other areas. Again, this is just going to add to that vintage feel. If this is not a look that you like, you would just leave this step out. Because I added the clear wax first, I can wipe back a lot of this. I can even go back in with some more clear wax and almost completely erase it. So if you are a bit nervous about trying dark waxes, definitely pop that clear wax down first so you have the freedom to get the look that you want by wiping it back. Now I'm also going to add some of Dixie Belle's Dixie Dirt. This is a powder form product and you just add it on with a brush and you can see I'm just wiping it back with a cloth. I also like to use a larger brush to wipe it back in areas that are a bit tricky to get to. I love adding this product to areas where I think that that age would naturally accumulate, especially in cracks and crevices. And here are our finished bookends. I love how these turned out. I love that by adding that milk paint, I've been able to tie together some very different pieces to create some beautiful architectural salvage inspired bookends. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. Our next project is this wooden plaque sign that I picked up for a dollar at the thrift store. I always grab these. I think that it's definitely a great place to get your craft supplies. Now I'm removing the hooks on the back. I've cut that wire off. I don't want to hang it this way. We are going to be using it in a portrait orientation. So after cleaning, I'm adding a coat of Dixie Belle's French linen chalk mineral paint. As I'm adding this, I'm noticing that the text and the image are actually a little bit raised. I'm not worried though because when I come across something like this I will often just change the direction of my brush strokes on my next coat and that tends to hide any raised details. So here I'm coming in with that second coat. I'm changing the direction of my brush strokes and this should be able to hide any of those details. Once my paint is dry, I'm going to be taking an element from IOD's Melange Paint Inlay. I haven't used this design yet, but I've been waiting for the perfect project. I'm going to trim off the text from the top and the bottom. Unfortunately, they will not fit in the center. To give this more of an ornate look, I'm going to be using IOD's Classic Elements mold. I've pre-cast this particular design in resin. I did accidentally break it, so now I'm using some Gorilla Glue to put it back together. To apply our inlay, I'm first going to put down a nice even coat of the French linen and I have changed those brush strokes once again, just really hiding that design underneath. When you're laying this coat, you want to be mindful that it is even, that it's not too thick, that it's not too thin. You've really got to find that happy medium. Once I have that coat down, I'm going to take the inlay and press it into the paint design side down. That grid should be facing up at you and then I'm going to use Use my fingers to carefully smooth the design out. I don't mind wrinkles, but if any of you dislike those, you can use a brayer like I'm doing now. That definitely helps to get rid of those wrinkles and any air bubbles. And when you come in with a mister here to dampen the inlay, this also helps that paper to be smoothed out. I'm using a damp cloth here, and as you can see, I'm able to smooth out a lot of those wrinkles. I've let my inlay dry for a 
few hours. It was a bit of a chilly day today. Now I'm misting the inlay and dabbing off the excess water. I'm gonna let it sit for about 60 seconds before I start to pull it away. I'm now very slowly pulling my inlay away, being careful not to rip it because I will get another few uses out of this. If you feel any resistance, make sure you put it back down and lightly mist it before trying to pull it back again. I sealed this with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer and now I'm adding some candle wax on the edges of my little plaque here. I'm treating that as if it's the frame on the outside. Now I'm going to use some more of my milk paint mixture. I did end up adding just a little bit more water. We are going to be doing a little bit of layering and you can already see that the candle wax is providing a bit of a resist. Some of that milk paint is separating. That's perfect. And I'm just going to do one coat around the outside. I'm going to then dry it off before we move on to the second coat. I'm applying the second coat of milk paint and again, I don't need full coverage here. I actually really want it to look like a layered worn finish. So I'm applying that second coat and then I'm going to come in with my heat gun and I am going to definitely be speeding up the drying process. I want to achieve those lovely cracks and the chippy look that we love. I definitely want to give this an aged look. A lot of people ask me, how do I get rid of the lines on the edge of where the paint inlay was? Here, I'm just using some 220 grit sandpaper to blend in the edges. I'm then going to use the same sandpaper to go around the outside and distress. I'm then using some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax to seal the entire piece. To age this, I'm going to be using some of Dixie Belle's Dixie Dirt. You can see I'm focusing on a lot of the edges and areas where I think that that age would naturally accumulate. I'll also add a little bit to the frame around the outside. If this look wasn't for you, you could always leave this step out or perhaps you could come in with some sort of a whitewash glaze or a white wax. Now I need to work on my mold to go up the top. So I'm adding a layer of French linen chalk mineral paint. And once that is completely dry, I will come in with the fusion milk paint. I decided to add this separately as it can be a little bit awkward painting around molds. I'll be doing two coats of the milk paint and on the second coat, I will be speeding up the drying process to get some more of that wonderful chippy crackle look. Now I'm going to use some hot glue on the back of my mold to attach it to my artwork. Once the mold is secured, I'm going to come in with some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Clear to seal the milk paint and also to use as a base for our Dixie Dirt that we're coming in with now to give this a more antiqued look. Remember, if you do not have access to Dixie Dirt, you could always use a dark wax or a glaze instead. The final touch on this piece is some of Dixie Belle's gold gilding wax. I'm adding that to the ornate details on my mold and then I'll also add hints of it on the rest of the artwork. And here's our finished artwork. I love how this turned out. Those inlays are absolutely beautiful and they pair perfectly with the beautiful molds. Let me know what you think of this in the comments.
For our final project, we're going to be using these books that I thrifted. One way that I really like to do my book stacks is to actually peel back the colored covers. This is a little bit tricky. You need to find a corner and then start to peel back the layers, but it is so worth it. I love the end results of these. So you can see I just sort of work in sections and slowly pull the color away. It leaves you with such a lovely paper cover that's textured. And if you're lucky, it'll also have some A Age from use over the years. You definitely have to have patience with this process, but it is so worth it. If this feels like a little bit too much work for you, I have done a video where I covered some hardcover books with some drop cloth. I will drop that link into this video and maybe that will be some inspiration for you. Otherwise, you could also paint the covers as well. To get off any stubborn bits that wouldn't come off, I'm just going to use some 220 grit sandpaper to lightly scuff the books. I'm then going to be using IOD's Antiquities Stamp. This has a lot of wonderful typography that we're going to use today. So I have my book stack and I want to add designs to the sides, the spines of the books, but also the front and the back because I want these to be able to be used separate as well. So I have this little design here that I'm inking up, but I'm then coming in with a baby wipe and I'm wiping off the excess from the areas that I don't want to stamp with. And you'll see that I repeat this process with a variety of stamps. I just really had a play here. It was lots of fun working out what elements from what stamps I wanted to use. Now I'm going to add the little address from the same stamp. So inking up that section, wiping back the excess with the baby wipe. And then I'm going to position that on the bottom part of the spine of the book. Now I'm going to grab some different text from a different stamp. And again, this was just really a lot of fun. I just went with whatever felt right. And you don't have to use this stamp. If you do not have access to these, you could always use a stencil instead. Perhaps you could use some decoupage paper, or you could even maybe print off some labels for your books. Now I'm going to grab one of the round stamps and I'm going to use just the text from the center. For the next book, I'm going to use the stamp that has the bicycle. I'm going to take the text up the top and again, just wiping back any of the excess. And then I'll also be making use of the text down the bottom. Because I want these books to be able to be displayed separate, not just as a stack, I'm going to add some stamps to the front of some of these and also on the back section, just depending on how they sit in the book stack. The Antiquities stamp set from IOD was really perfect for this project. There were so many different designs to choose from, so much wonderful typography to play with. It really was a pleasure to do this craft using those stamps.
Because of how this book stack will stand with the others, I needed to add a back to this particular one. So I'm just going to add some of the details that were already on the spine to the back and also one of the round stamps. finish these off, I'm going to wrap them with some twine. If you are not a fan of twine, you could always use some ribbon or some lace instead. And here's our finished book stack. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think it's definitely worth the extra effort if you can to peel back those book covers to get this wonderful result. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. I think that these projects were so much fun and it is amazing what some wonderful chippy milk paint and some stamps and the beautiful IOD inlay can do for thrifted finds. Let me know, do you have a favorite from today's video? If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you haven't already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.